morning, guys. How you doing? It's Henry at Motors and Blowers. Good morning. It's been really cold lately. Today is warmer. 33 degrees. Okay, okay. I'm going to work on the golf cart today. I've been dreading working on it because, honestly, I don't even really want to be outside. Anyway. What prompted me to say I'm going to work on the golf cart today was because I finally got my crankshaft bolt. 3 8 24 ultra fine thread. Cost me $9 and change on eBay. So let's see. Is it going to fit the hole? Is it turning? It is turning. One, two. It's pretty tight. Hi, Jerry. Jerry. I don't think it's the right thread. I uh, turned it with a, a wrench so much that it moved, you know, up to the compression stroke only about half an inch, as you can see. Now, it's not destroying the thread that bad, but it is. But the thing is, I know that if I use a driver, a um, impact driver, and drive it in, like a one-shot deal, you know what I mean? Basically creating these threads to go in, just to go in, because look, Technically, it's on here and won't even come off. You know what I mean? So you don't really even need it. I mean, eventually with torque on it and stuff, um, it may slip, but I don't think it'll come off, you know? Uh, with time and heat and rust and all that stuff, it'll basically bind or fuse to the crankshaft, you know? So instead of my figuring out what... Um, thread this actually is it might even be the millimeter one but they said these gx340 engines made for honda was for the u.s market and they were tapped in thread to 3 8 by 24 that's what they said uh it is going in by hand tightening it by half an inch you know and i know that if i just turned it a little more this this will turn but i think if i just impact it in there it'll work um thinking about using the spacer that this thing came with, that'll take up another um, little more than a quarter inch, right? And then another washer. Maybe I'll put a couple of washers there to fill up the space. But I'm anticipating it going in another half an inch to an inch. So that ought to be okay. But I'm just not sure since it's a one-shot deal, you know? One shot all the way in. Just have it in there. That's it. I think that's just what I'm gonna do because I just about had it with this project. Okay, so I've got the original spacer that's offset so that it goes right into the hole there and holds it uh, steady. Then I've got this other thicker spacer in the middle to take up space. A couple of pretty good washers that are exactly the same diameter as the shaft. So this will take up like an inch, right? I'm not expecting this to go all the way in. I probably would be fine with it just going in halfway, so that it ought to do it. I was thinking about adding more, but this looks like it'll be all right. So I can turn it with my hands freely up to there. I pull this back out again. I've got about a half inch of slack. I'm sorry, a quarter inch of slack. So if I could get it in just a quarter inch more, I think that'll be fine. I mean, I just want to hold it in there. You know what I mean? So here I go. One shot. All or nothing. Where I strip the threads. Here we go. Seems like it keeps moving. Oh, and look, it's still loose. Dang. There we go, now it's stopping.
How is that still loose though? You know what I mean? It's there though. There we go. So this is not gonna come off. And that's just my concern is that it comes off. It won't come off now. That's it. I'm just happy it didn't strip going in, you know what I mean? So now I'm going to put this engine in once and for all. Okay, so here is the engine compartment. As you've seen from my past few episodes, I fabricated this engine mounting plate and it's on here, drilled holes. I just haven't tightened them down yet. Now, some people said, and I'm taking advice from my subscribers, that because this axle is on the leaf springs, it's going to move up and down, up and down. So this cannot be uh, solid on here. This part here, this bracket, original bracket, had rubber stoppers on the top and on the bottom of this plate. And so that's for the flex. As you're going over bumps and stuff, the leaf springs will give and the suspension will move up and down. Therefore, this mount on the front of this plate to the frame of the body has to slightly give. So I'm gonna take those, um, where is it? Ah, uh, here it is. This is the uh, original bracket for the starter generator. And as you can see, it's got this huge rubber stopper on this shaft. So I'm gonna put this rubber stopper and this rubber stopper on the top and the bottom of this to give it the flex that it needs. And this is advice from my subscribers. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I, if it wasn't for the advice of the subscribers, I wouldn't be doing this. And I would find out later after I mounted the engine that this thing is gonna be slowly bending or not giving it any flex, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna remove this bolt and shaft, put the washers in between, and actually have that uh, suspension now. So I'm gonna do that now. So obviously this is not gonna be long enough to uh, work. So I'm gonna use the original bolt, but I wanna see whether or not it would even fit. So that would go on like that, or should go on like this, actually. Like that. And then it would go through here and then to the bottom and pretend that this would be there. And then this would be there. And another plate. There. And that should be able to tighten. Yep, yeah. that's my plan, I'm sticking to it. Okay. All right. So now we've got the, uh, rubber stopper in there and uh, it's now cushioned for, for flex which is what the subscribers told me to do which makes a hundred percent sense I'm gonna tighten the bolts on those two right now and then uh, we'll go from there Okay, now that mounting plate is torqued down. It's not going anywhere, and hopefully we have a little bit of flex over here. Okay, now I'm gonna put the engine in there. <laughs> Crazy. So, um, what am I gonna do about the belt? So the stock belt, I believe, is 41 inches, even though this doesn't look like 41 inches, but I guess it is. Um, obviously, the engine is gonna be further towards the front 
by a few inches because the holes don't match up to the original. So it's gonna be two or three or four inches longer than I need it to be. So I did look online and they do have this exact diameter belt about three or four inches longer I could just buy it. It's like $25, $30. But I'm just gonna put this on right now in case I could see whether or not it, it'll stretch, it won't stretch that much, you know, but I just wanted to see the placement of it, you know? I'm just gonna let it sit here for a minute. I'm gonna lift up the engine now. How did I do this last time? Now I got a plate in here, you know what I mean? I was able to stand in here before, but now I don't, I can't because I have a plate in here. I'm gonna stand. All right. We're just gonna put this on there just to see the fitment. And see where I, I wanna draw the holes to where to drill to mount it. brake line is stuck under it. <laughs> Maybe I should take this air cleaner off. It's getting in the way. I'll figure out a way to put it back on later. Just this box is in the way. Yeah, that'd be good for now. This throttle thing is kind of hitting the valve cover too. Yeah, that this brake line is really in the way. I didn't I didn't think of that earlier. Okay. So I'm thinking that's the placement of it right there. This wire here leads to the pedal, gas pedal. So when you step on it, this thing moves and we're not gonna be using this because this is the original, uh, when you step on it, this moves the, the throttle, you know, the linkage to the carburetor for throttle. Um, being that the carburetor is no longer in this area it's now over there and the governor linkage is in there uh, we'll have to work that out later but one step at a time right this is just a bracket here on the transmission to hold this mechanism that's all that is so I can actually remove this if I wanted to because this thing should be routed somewhere around there now you know um, also I was looking at the belt so initially Initially, the uh, this clutch was over here, you know, this is where it ends, right there. The shaft was like right around here. So now we're extending it about five inches forward, right? So because we're extending it five inches, you have to double the inches, so it's 10 inches. So if this belt was like 42 inches, right, stock, I would need a 52 inch belt. Take you down here to what I'm talking about. Those two bolts that now hold the plate used to be the bolts to mount the engine of the Robin Wisconsin. So we're talking about new bolts over here. So you're talking about one, two, three, four, about four inches forward. 
So you double that and that's eight. So we're talking about maybe a 50 or 52 inch belt that I need, I'm not sure. But I think because it's supposed to have some slack, right? It being an inch or two longer is okay because this clutch will retract and grip the belt. Ideally you want it exactly, but I'm not gonna go and buy like uh, four belts at $20, you know what I mean, just to try. But I'm gonna try to mark where the engine sits and because I can't see the holes, maybe I'd have to crawl underneath to like put a dot or something like that. I, I can't because there's no holes. I have to drill the holes. So I almost have to estimate. Look, look where this hole is down there. I can't even get a pen in there, you know? There's a bolt there. So I have to try to mark off where, where I should drill the holes. So I thought to myself, how on earth am I going to mark where the holes are if I can't see where it is, you know? I'm going to take some paint and just paint right around the sides there. And then when I lift out the engine, the white space that's left is where the engine belongs. As you can see here, the bolts are out of the hole, okay? If I can get some paint in those two holes, I'll know at least where two holes are. So I'm just gonna let paint drip into that hole. Paint drip into that hole. So when I lift the engine out, I'll see where the engine sits exactly and I'll be able to see that at least two holes are there. So I'll make a cardboard cutout, measure the distance between that hole and the other hole where I can't get to and the, on the other side too, and then make a template to where those two other holes on this side is supposed to go. I think that's the best way to do it. I'm gonna wait for this paint to dry, and then we'll lift out the engine and hopefully we'll be able to obviously see where the holes should be drilled. Well, the paint's not drying because it's too cold. All right, kind of have a pattern there. See? You know that one of the holes is there. I can't really tell here. I'm thinking it's this hole right there. This is a long longitudinal, 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 so it's right around there. But I'll measure between here, where the hole is supposed to be, and there, because you could see that there's a pattern on where the engine was. So I'm thinking it's right there, or about, so I'll drill the hole bigger. See if I can get this done without doing a bigger hole. What's up, Quinn? Congratulations, Henry! Yes! Yeah. I won a pick five football pool uh, last weekend. $800 pot every weekend. Unfortunately, nine other people also won that weekend, so I gotta split $800 with 10 people. So I get like 80 bucks. Hey, better than nothing, right? Okay, as you saw, 
I drilled four big holes, even though it felt if I was off by a quarter inch or something, hopefully those holes will accommodate. Just gotta make sure you got some long bolts that have big washers, that's all. So I found some engine mounting bolts. Got washers ready with the right nuts. And then I'm just gonna try to put this in there and just pray that I measured correctly and that those bolts will fall right into the hole. And then I'll be able to mount this engine on those four holes there. Uh, remind me not to uh, torque them down because I need to order the belt, right? And I won't be able to put the belt on if the engine is mounted on here because this clutch is not coming back off again ever. So I have to just like uh, loop it around and then tighten the bolts. You guys can tell in the future this is going to be a headache, right? Okie dokie, so uh, got the engine on there again, and uh, I was looking at this. This uh, bracket here is, is touching this, and it prevents this from moving around. I think that uh, when I do get the belt, I'm gonna have to slice a piece of this off, just so it doesn't like rattle here. And so I measured the original belt. It is exactly 42 inches. But I'm really not too sure what I should do. Uh, it ends around there, you know, so I, I need to get like five inches more between here and there, I think. So if five inches, you double it because it goes around, right, uh, in distance. You're thinking maybe 10 or 8 inches added to it, so should I get a 50 or a 52 inch? Just don't know. I don't want it to be too snug because then it'll, the slight retraction of the uh, clutch will cause it to go. I want a little bit of slack, you know, for it to gri grip on. So I almost feel that longer is better, you know. Anyway, uh, so look at here. First shot of drilling. And hope you guys can see. I can't. I'm just feeling. There's one bolt here. And the other bolt is there. Problem is you can't get the bolt on because this damn thing is in the way. So I might have to crawl under here and grind this part out so that the so that the nut will fit on there, you know? That was the, another pickle that I thought of. And then the other two came through here and there. So my first shot at drilling the holes were correct. I drilled the holes extra large. As long as I put washers on and torque them down, it ought to be okay. But uh, when I do get the belt, I'm going to have to crawl down here and drill this out. Uh, grind a part out here so that at least the bolt will fit. Uh, the nut. The nut will fit against that wall. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I can't get the nut in there. So there you go big step today drilling the holes to the engine mounting plate uh, having them line up I might have to do some grinding the next episode to get that wall of aluminum out of the way so that the nut would fit because being the way it is right now the nuts not going to be able to fit there unless I just get it on a couple of threads and then from the top just tighten it up but then I can't put a washer there but because it's so tight I don't think you would need a washer so I'm going to try that first without having to grind that wall of aluminum out of the way so I can get the nut on there. Uh, gonna have to really think hard and, and, and see if I should get a 50 inch, 48, 50, 52 inch belt. Because you don't know unless you actually put it on, you know what I mean? And have it running to see how it, how it goes, you know? So that, that's always a mystery right there. If any of you guys have this kind of belt, 
something you're just sitting around that's just sitting around a house you don't need let me know send it to me save me if I buy three of them a 48 a 50 and a 52 it's gonna be like uh, 60 bucks tax shipping 80 bucks just for a belt you know and at eBay you can't return them you know if there's if it doesn't fit too bad you know anyway I got another package from my friends over at hippa360.com and uh, hopefully I will have to um, grind that aluminum wall because I requested one of these things. When they asked me what parts do I need the most, I looked on their website, hippa360.com, and I said, oh, that's kind of cool. I could always use that and I'll use it in the video and have an opportunity to shout you out. Henry, hurry up and unwrap it. What is it? I don't want to break it. They wrapped it nicely for a reason. It's gonna laugh. Oh, this is not what I thought it would be. So I wanted to get a. Uh, I guess I saw this on their website. Let me put it together. So there you go. Uh, I thought this was like uh, plexiglass, you know, or acrylic glass or something, so that I could use it for a COVID shield or for grinding. But actually, it's it's steel mesh, fine steel mesh. So this is for weed whacking. You guys know when you weed whack, pebbles, debris, whatever, shoots into your face, hits you in the eye, and blind you, you know. So this is when you use it for protecting your eyeballs from weed whacking. That's what it is. I mean, that's great, you know, because I used to wear goggles over my glasses so that my lenses of my glasses don't get scratched from the pebbles from weed whacking. And I used to wear these goggles and it would, in the summertime, it's so hot, it gets fogged up and really uncomfortable. This is very comfortable and this will protect my glasses and my eyes from shooting debris and gravel from weed whacking. So that's very cool. You can get this over at HIPAA360.com. Go check out their entire store. They've been sending me a lot of stuff lately, stuff that I need for my project, stuff that I most uh, often use. And because I most oftenly use those items, I'm sure you guys use it too. Uh, they all come in kits and stuff, so everything you need in one box. So uh, go check those guys out. In the meantime, I gotta go order the belt. I have to figure out how I'm gonna get a few belts that you know uh, see I could go to my backyard and get a whole bunch of belts but they're all like you know 3 8 or 1 half V belts and the way this is designed the way the transmission pulley as well as the clutch pulley is designed is that they're they're a big V and it it retracts from centripetal force you know so it has to grip not just the uh, a half inch or three eighths it's uh, 1.8 inches you know one and an eighth inch thick of uh, belt so I mean I just got to figure it out this is a 42 but I know I'm about four or five inches more further that way so if it's four or five inches you got to add eight or ten inches right so instead of 42 you, I need a 50 or 52 uh, maybe a 48 I'm not sure but I think with the way this centrifugal clutch is designed is that it allows slack see what I'm saying so if it's too loose it allows that uh, and then when when the engines running the clutch goes in and grips it and pulls the transmission that's how it's designed so I'm I'm thinking 40 I'm thinking 50 or 52 but I think 52 might be too long but I'll have to try to work it out. I'll, I'll mess around with this a little bit and just kind of gauge as to what I should do. Uh, anyway, that's a big part of it right there. I don't know if this thing is going to, you know, be done by, by, you know, the end of the winter. I mean, I, I guess I'm getting kind of close, but I still got to figure out ignition switch, solenoid, throttle, pedal, cable to the throttle, how I'm going to attach it onto the governor to control the speed. You know, and it's really tight over there to pull start it too. You know, I could pull it and my knuckles will hit something and 
cause it to bleed, you know, that's not ideal. And then of course I've got the starter generator that I have to figure out how to mount on there too eventually. So I mean it's a long term thing. But uh, hey, at least we got the engine on, on a mounting plate with the holes and it fits. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on this uh, part 18 of my uh, Easy Go 1200 wheel horse Honda GX340 repower project. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, I'm Andy from Jericho. See, See you guys, guys next, next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.